What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken, and today, guys, we are here to talk about this Dark Sky Films release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on 4K. I have been waiting for this for such a long time, it feels like. Of course, we've got that Second Sight edition coming um, in April. I could not wait, though. I had to get this Dark Sky release. I had to watch this movie in 4K. This is one of the best horror films of all time. This is up there, guys, with the likes of The Exorcist, Halloween, The Shining, The Thing. It's just one of those landmark psycho, one of those landmark horror films that just changed the world of horror forever. There is horror before the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and there is horror after uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it is one of those horror films, one of the most important horror films of all time. This is a movie from 1974 directed by the legendary Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper has done some of the greatest horror films of all time. This movie, but he also directed the sequel, which is so tonally different than this one. But honestly, like rewatching this uh, last night, there are a lot of similarities in the tone. I just think that this one's a lot more mean-spirited at its core, whereas the second one definitely plays up the comedy a little bit more. And of course, Toby Hooper did Poltergeist. So this guy, just on those three films alone, is a legend, but he did so many other great horror movies. A Life Force he did as well. And The Funhouse Massacre also. So Toby Hooper is just a legend in horror, but he did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974, completely changed the game. One of the greatest horror movies of all time, and this is a movie that I've had kind of an arc with since I've seen it. I remember the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie I ever saw was Next Generation. I think I saw it on like HBO or Showtime or something when I was like 10 or 11, and I was completely turned off at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre after I saw it. That might have been my first Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey movie as well. I did not return to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre until the remake came out in 2003. Saw that in the theaters absolutely loved it and then you know several people were telling me about i need to go back and check out the original texas chainsaw massacre so i did and i thought it was good but i was like that 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 sequel that that remake like that is better in my opinion like that's so much more violent there's so much more violence and gore and leatherface is just freaking mean as hell in that movie where he's just a little bit tamer um, in this film. I didn't get all the subtle nuances uh, of Leatherface's performance, Gunnar Hansen's uh, performance when I watched this for the first time. Um, and then, the, you know, the remake has Arlie Ermey, and there's just a lot of things I love about that remake, but it wasn't until a few years later in just subsequent rewatches of this movie that I just really started to get into it. And I think it was a couple of years ago I watched it again for like maybe the fourth or fifth time, and I'm like, God damn, this movie is just a masterpiece of all time. I will say I appreciate this movie a lot more now uh, than I did when when I was younger, for sure. Now, do I now is this still one? Is this one of my top favorite horror movies of all time? Probably not, but I can see a world where this moves up into my top ten at some point. Like I love it more and more every single time I see it. Like this this most recent watch when I watched this 4K, I really got into it. Like there's a lot that this movie does to like build the tension, build the atmosphere, just create the world building in this movie is the thing that I think I'm most impressed with. The fact that it can drop you into this world and it feels real. Like everything about this movie feels real, it feels raw, it feels visceral. There are points in this movie where you feel like you're there with the characters and it's just so uncomfortable and unsettling some of the things that happens. And again, it's all very subtle. So if you're not picking up on the, the little things that this movie does, I don't think it's really going to have an effect on you. But if you really allow yourself to get sucked into this world, I think you're going to take a lot more away from it uh, than you would otherwise. And I, I totally get some people and well, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this movie. I've heard some people say, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is overrated. And I think the problem is, is when movies are hyped to this degree, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a big name. Like when somebody says that, you're just like, oh damn, like that's 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 a big movie. That is gruesome. That's one of the most violent, uh, scariest horror movies of all time. When it's hyped up to that level and you've never seen it and you go back and watch it and then you're comparing it to today's standards. Like there's been movies like Saul, like Hostel, like more, most recently the Terrifier 2 that are much more violent than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just, but you have to put it into context. You have to put yourself back 
1974 and realized they were not making movies like this back in 1974. This was an original. This was the first of its kind. So if you view it through that lens, through that context, you're going to appreciate this movie a lot more. And there's still a lot of violence in this movie. There's a lot of moments of just like, oh my God, just the moment where he picks the girl up and puts her on the hook. Like that is, that is violent, just uncomfortable, unsettling. Or the moment that really gets me in the movie is when they cut her finger open and put it in the mouth of the old grandpa and he starts sucking on it. And it just lingers on the old man as he's sucking on the finger. And that, that is so, that is so gnarly. Like that is so uncomfortable and so grotesque. That's honestly like one of the most, like I can't even watch that scene. Like I have to kind of look away after a while. That's one of the most grotesque scenes I've ever seen in any horror movie. Um, so yeah, you have to appreciate it. And Leatherface, it's just, he's so good in this movie. Like for when he debuts, he comes out and knocks that guy in the head. It is such just a, it's an abrupt, just very violent, very scary scene. And yeah, I just, I appreciate this movie now so much. Is it one of my favorites? No, it's not, but I, I appreciate it so much more. And I can see a world where it becomes one of my favorites um, in years to come. So as far as criticisms, I don't really have any criticisms. It's not like, as far as like the filmmaking, even though I think this movie is, is very well shot. There's some really cool shots in this movie. There's some really cool camera work. I think it's, you know, definitely very well directed by Toby Hooper. But it's not a masterpiece as far as like filmmaking. It's not a Shining. It's not a Poltergeist. It's not Exorcist. It's not of that level. It's masterful in a different way. It's very dark. It's very grungy. It's very grimy. It's very unsettling is, is the best word that I can use to describe this movie. So while it's not one of my favorite horror movies of all time, I still got to give this movie just as a score. I got to give it a five out of a five. Like this is just one of the landmark horror films ever made. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, 4K restoration. So like I said, this is Dark Skies uh, 4K restoration. This is a native uh, 4K transfer with Dolby Vision and HDR10. So this was shot on 16 millimeter back in 1974, 1973, or whenever, whenever they actually shot the movie. Uh, so this was never going to be the cleanest 4K restoration. Like if you're going into this thinking you're gonna get some like highly detailed, like pristine level 4K restoration out of it, you're not gonna get that. So just get that idea out of your head. This movie's not supposed to be clean. It's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be dingy. It's supposed to be grimy. It's supposed to be grungy. So taking that into account, I don't know if I would want this movie to be uh, the cleanest that it could possibly be. And of course, we are getting that second sight uh, version coming out in April. And by all accounts, that's supposed to be um, a new restoration, like Second Sight's supposed to go in and do additional work. So I could see, you know, maybe that's a little bit cleaner, maybe that's a little bit better, but also I could see some people maybe preferring this one if that's the case. If that one comes out and it's real like pristine and real clear and real crisp and real clean, I could see like traditional Texas Chainsaw Massacre fans being like, I like the Dark Sky release better because it's, it maintains that grungy, gritty uh, style of the film but it, it highlights everything else in the best possible way. I think you need to go into this with the right expectations. This is a nasty, ugly film at its core. And honestly, that's part of the charm and part of the experience of this movie. Um, like without that, like you don't have, that's part of the aura of the film. Now that being said, it does improve in all the other areas that it needs to. Uh, without feeling like it took away from the gritty and the down and dirty feel of the early presentations, the close-up shots here are really incredible. Like there's a close-up shot near the end of the movie where it zooms in on Sally's face and her eye, and that's where they get the cover um, of this release. And it kind of stays there for a little bit. And that detail around her eye and just the tears coming out and just the sweat on her face, you can see the beads of sweat. All that stuff looks incredible in 4K. And that, that, that kind of detail was not present um, on the Blu-ray. So you do get that um, enhancement there. HDR also really enhances the colors here, in particular, some of those outdoor sequences. The sequence where, and this is my, probably my favorite shot of the movie, is the girl in the red shorts as she's walking up to the house after her boyfriend's just been bopped in the head by Leatherface and carried off, when she's walking up to that house and you see the contrast of her red shorts with the white on the house and then the blues of the sky and then the greens of the grass, 
All that stuff looked so great with that HDR and Adobe Vision. And in that moment, in the rest of the outdoor sequences as well, the colors are extremely rich. They're very natural, like it just feels real. It feels like it, it would have looked back when they shot it back in 1974. Nothing as oversaturated like it was in the previous Blu-rays. Just brings back that very natural look, which is the best thing that 4K does, in my opinion. It takes away um, just the oversaturation. It also it, it enhances the colors and makes them look more rich, but also more real. It feels like something you would see in real life rather than just something that's super oversaturated. So that's what I appreciated um, about this transfer the most is what that HDR did for some of the colors um, in this movie. And also just the detail on the, on the close-up shots. And I already alluded to this a little bit when I was talking about how gritty and dark and dingy this movie is, but this has a great deal of film grain in it. Like if you're going into this, like I said, expecting it to be totally cleaned up and having no film grain, you're going into the movie the wrong way. Expect heavy, heavy sequences of grain in this movie. It is a very grainy transfer. Now at the same time, the detail is still there. It still looks great, but you had that very filmic look. And I mean, this was shot on 16 millimeter, but the grain, I had no issue. To be honest, I had no real issues with this transfer at all, really. Like I, I really enjoyed uh, the 4K edition of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Dark Sky. I think they did a great job on this restoration. Now getting into the sound a little bit, uh, you have several audio options here. You have English Dolby Atmos, which going into this, I was like, really Dolby Atmos on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Do I really need that? But I'm telling you right now, in particular, like the last 30 minutes, there's a lot of like slamming around in the house. Like they're kind of throwing Sally around. People are kind of running into walls, leather faces, bumbling around in the house. You feel like every bump um, in those sequences. And so that the Adobe Atmos definitely enhances some of those moments, I think. The chainsaw sounded excellent. Like when you hear him rev it up from a distance and he's running across the field towards Sally, like it really did sound great with that Adobe Atmos. And the sound of that score, which I, I don't know if you would really call it a score in this movie. Like it's not really music. It's more so just like ambient sounds. Uh, just throughout the movie, it is kind of a score. Like there's a, it feels like there's a little music here and there. Um, Asha has English Dolby True HD 7.1, uh, English DTS HD Master Audio 7.1, English DTS Master Audio 2.0. So it still maintains that mono track as well, the 2.0 and the DTS Master Audio Mono as well. And they definitely did a great job of cleaning up just the audio overall from the previous releases for sure. So getting into uh, the packaging here, you had this. Beautiful slipcover, which I'd be lying if I said one of the big reasons why I went ahead and grabbed this uh, and didn't want to wait for the second site release coming out in April is because of this slipcover. Like it's an awesome looking slipcover and I just love the eye right there. I actually took the sticker off the plastic and put it on the case. I like doing that uh, from time to time, but you have that classic font work for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre down below and going ahead and taking it out of the case. And this is, you know, the best part. They use the classic poster for the cover, which they definitely should, uh, you know, inside. I, I'm glad that they didn't reuse the artwork that was on the slip cover. And on the back right there, I'll kind of zoom in so you can see the synopsis and all the special features, which there are plenty of special features in this release. And that's another thing I have to commend Dark Sky for, uh, just really adding in tons of supplemental material here. You have four audio commentaries in this release. Now, they're, none of them are new. They're all archival commentaries from previous releases, so none of them are new, but you get uh, two commentaries with Toby Hooper. You get one with the cinematographer. You also get a commentary with some of the actors as well, so four new audio commentaries, just incredible. But the thing that's the most incredible is you get a brand new feature link documentary the legacy of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this is one of the reasons why I thought that this uh, the second sight and Dark Skies films were kind of collaborating with this release. And I, I don't know if they'd come out and said that yet or not, but the feature link documentary here was produced by Second Sight. So they're definitely working together on this release. I don't know if they're gonna be using the same transfer. When you read the Second Sight announcement, it says that new restoration work is being done by Second Sight, but does that mean that there's gonna be new restoration work on the second side release, or does that mean the restoration work has already been done for the second side release and they're using that same transfer for this one? Like that's what I've been trying to figure out. Or did Dark Sky do the transfer for this one, then second sites doing like additional work, or maybe second side did the transfer for this one, and then they're doing even more additional work for their release. 
I don't, I don't exactly know what's going on there, but they're definitely working together because they're both using uh, the same exclusive new documentary uh, for their releases. So this legacy of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I watched this entire documentary. It's a great documentary. A lot of great people talking about their experience with the film and just the overall legacy um, of the movie. Like this is the kind of stuff I want, guys. Like people talking about movies in a retrospective sense. Now, like today, like a lot of people think. We got all this stuff back in the day. We got all these interviews back in the day. We got plenty of documentaries talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2014, 2004. All that's great. But I want people to talk about this movie today, to talk about its legacy today, how it's impacting people in 2022, 2023. I want more interviews today. That's what I want. So, uh, you know, Second Sight and Dark Sky definitely delivered there. And that's a, it's a great documentary. Uh, you got, uh, you know, Fede Alvarez on there, Mick Garris, um, the guy who directed uh, Jason Goes to Hell is on there. I can't remember. Adam Marcus um, is on there. A lot of great people, t- film critics and stuff like that. A lot of great people talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I loved it. I loved it. I love to see stuff like that. It's awesome. Uh, you also have the Senate Family presents Freakin' Hooper, which is an hour long conversation between William Freakin and Toby Hooper, the man who made The Exorcist, the man who made uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now that's a very Texas Chainsaw Massacre focused conversation, uh, but it's a really cool conversation between the two of them. I watched about half of that, didn't have time uh, to finish it, so I probably will a little bit later. But you also got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Shocking True, Flesh Wound, Seven Stories of Saul, Tour of Texas Chainsaw Massacre House with Gunnar Hansen, Off the Hook with Terry McMinn, uh, The Business of Chainsaw, an interview with production manager Ron Bosman, Grandpa's Tales, an interview with actor John Dugan, uh, Cutting Chainsaw, an interview with editor J. Larry uh, Carroll, Deleted Scenes, Outtakes, Blooper Reel, Outtakes from the Shocking Truth, Horrors Hollow Grounds is in this as well. Dr. Uh, W.E. Barnes presents Making Grandpa. So I mentioned they're talking about the making, the, the makeup for the grandpa, which the, the grandpa is terrifying um, in, this, in these movies. Still gallery, trailers, TV spots, radio spots. So my God, guys, you've got tons of supplemental material um, in this release. So, I mean, look, it's it's hard not to recommend this release from Dark Sky. I think they did a great job on this 4K. The, the restoration looks great. Could the second site look better? Yeah, it possibly could look better, but maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you want uh, this more gritty Dark Sky release. Maybe the second site release is going to be too clean. You don't know. And again, that second site release is going for about 50% more than this one is. So now me, I'm going to get that second side release. I've already got it pre-ordered. I'm going to get it in. I'm going to do a review on that one as well. But look, I would suggest you get this one. And currently right now, guys, at Best Buy, this is $25.99. On Amazon, it's still $31.49. So I don't know why it's a little bit cheaper at Best Buy. But if you want to get this, definitely order it uh, from Best Buy because it's, it's a better price on there. But for everything that you get, even at the Amazon price of $31.49, it's still worth it to me. It looked great. The sound upgrade was great. I mean, Dolby Atmos, like everybody's always calling for that. And they gave it to you here with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The movie's an all-time classic. The special features are out of this world. I love the new documentary. And it's got a great slipcover and packaging. So I have to recommend this uh, to you guys. If you're on the fence, look, Second Sight always does a great job. I'm sure that's going to be a great release. You may want to hold out for that one. But if you want to watch it today, right now, this is definitely a great addition that is well worth your time and money investment. So I appreciate you guys watching this review of Texas Chainsaw Massacre on 4K. Like this video. Comment down below your thoughts on this movie. If you're going to pick this release up, let me know. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. And follow me on all my social media accounts down below in the description. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.